Buenos Dias Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Like a motherfucking smack addict, right? And as you can tell by today's thumbnail, yes, indeed, I'm about to put graffiti on the bus in a menudo style in a direct fashion, man. Let's talk about it. As you can tell by that thumbnail right there, bang, bang. We're talking about prison fights, man, and some of the best fights I ever seen and some of the best fighters I ever seen. So I was good. Mm -mm. And in that fashion, there were some hitters in a half shell, turtle power, Vatos that definitely and indubitably, man, had them hands, them mitts, them fisticuffs, whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, they were knocking motherfuckers out, man. Flat on their backs, heads split wide open, things of that nature. And the beat goes on, right? It was pretty vicious. But trip out. Um, so doing time, you're going to see fights. You're going to see melees. You're going to be involved in melees. You're going to be involved in fights. Um, riots, whatever you want to call them. There's so many different words and different wordplay that we can use when we talk about this. The situations are going to happen, you know. As a youngster, growing up in a gang lifestyle, growing up from a barrio, a hood, whatever you want to call it, you're going to see things that you thought you'd never see. You're going to see things you've only seen in American Me, okay. You're going to participate in things that you couldn't even fathom. And at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, participation is a must where I'm from, right? As far as retaliation, that too. So Trip, um, seeing fights became commonplace as a youth in the youth authority. When people say YA babies, gladiator school, things of that nature, motherfucker, they ain't lying. Homes, they ain't lying in a menudo style. People getting sauced every day, you know? Even motherfucking gangsters that think they're all hard that are in there like, don't, 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 don't. Don't, don't, don't. This is for, uh, bam, game over. I've seen it happen. You see a lot of snake moves, people getting knocked out their boots, people getting knocked out, people getting snaked on, people getting their shit split. You know, it happens. Um, but some of the better ones that I ever seen, we're going to talk about here, you know. Um, I think one of the best fights I ever seen uh, was between this guy named Snoop from A. Trey Hoover um, and this guy named Spider from Backstreet Watts. E. Okay. Now, anyone who knew Snoop or has ever met a man uh, doing time with this guy was cool. One of the most coolest individuals I ever met. Uh, well educated, well schooled, well versed, man. Uh, just game on point, homie. Just was a good, decent vato. But at the same time, mm -mm, I'm not going to play golf with you, tennis, racquetball, badminton, rugby, or no, none of that, man. And especially not no fucking basketball because this guy was a terror on the basketball court. And it seemed like if it didn't go his way, so I'm scared your jaw was going to go that way. This Vato argued and fought over every game that I ever seen him play in. Vato, he'd be like, oh, hey, does anyone want to play basketball? No, no, I'm good, bro. I wasn't even going to. Hey, yeah, but I just seen, no, but no, you didn't see shit. Homie. It was all an optical illusion. What the, I ain't even trying to play basketball with you. You know what I mean? Because they already knew it was going to end in someone getting knocked out. Most likely them. The Vato had major, major, major hands. One of the best fighters I ever seen being locked up to this day, right? And at the same time, man, he just, his, he had that fire like Michael Jordan, I thought it was, right? Like Michael Jordan, he was very competitive, bro. And it always ended up in some type of fight, some type of issue. You know, it wasn't that the Vato was feeling like he was getting played. The Vato be up by 50 and still beat you up. So I'm scared. I won. I was 51 to 49. Charlie, bro, was 50, it was 50 to 49. So what you trying to say? No, you won. Yeah, but I won by two, right? You know what I mean? Too late. Sass. That's how he was. You know, everything turned into a fight. But uh, one day, um, he's playing basketball. And we, it was him and a lot of gente, man. It was mostly Cripas, though, at that time. It was mostly the Crips playing basketball. There was a few songs that sprinkled in. But it was mostly Crips. I remember Spider from Backstreet Watts, Chinaman from Hoover. Him, Lucky from, uh, shit, where was he from, man? Somewhere out of Compton. Um, Stone from Raymond Avenue Crip. A couple dudes from Long Beach. Monk from the East Coast. These guys were all playing basketball, doing their thing. I was a young Norteño in the corner trying to smoke a Micha, man. I was trying to smoke a little half of a fucking sick that I came up on. You know, I bought for two sofas and a soup. Uh, two sofas and a soap. Um, just doing my thing. The homeboy, me and the homeboy, bad boy from Sakura, we're kicking back smoking. And um, all of a sudden, man, I don't know what was said, man. But this Volta Spider from Backstreet Watts, I see him running behind the Hamble Court. So me and fucking bad boy take off kind of walking along the fence. Because we're going to, hey, we're young, man. We want to watch. We want to see what's going on. Of course, we're not going to fucking do no dry snitching, man, and divert tactics where the fucking placas are looking at us. But for the most part, when you're in YA and going behind the blinds, the cops don't care what's happening as long as they don't see it. Their name's Bennett. Homeboy, they're not in it, right? 
So now I see Snoop walking that way and I said, ooh we, oh my, right? And Snoop goes. And as soon as he hits that handball court, Holmes, these bottles rush each other like two fucking raging bulls at a fucking, at a fucking bullfight, right? And I'm telling you right now, bro, this was not an easy one to judge, right? These bottles were slanging them, right? And I had never seen Spider from Backstreet Watts fight. He was a lot, a lot more of a quiet individual, kept to himself, kind of did his own program. Of course, he kicked it with his car, which were the creepers at that time. But it wasn't like this Vato was boisterous or out there really doing his thing, man. He was just kind of quiet, kicked it with his people, and that was that, doing his time. But these motherfuckers, bro, they was on a different level. It was like a hurricane, a tornado, Sasuke, and a fucking, and a fucking uh, Salino concert all at once, right? There was shit flying everywhere. Um, they were getting it, bro. That fight probably was one of the longest fights I ever seen happen in front of my eyes without them getting busted. They must have fought for a good 10 minutes. They were getting their issue. And by the time it was done, Spider's fucking eye was damn near hanging out. Fucking, uh, the homeboy Snoop's knuckle was fucking cracked open. His fucking tooth was chipped. These bottles put it down, right? And I tell this story to say this. Two individuals, same car, same homeboys, just didn't see eye to eye, went like grown men, even though they were young kids at that time, 16, 17 years old, behind the handball court and like men handled their business, you know? Words were spoken, words were said, homes, fists were thrown. And after that, they sat down together with some fucking chipped teeth and ripped up ears and ate sopas, homes, you know? They let bygones be bygones, they handled their business as men. No one ever spoke on who won. Me personally, I thought Snoop fucking cracked him too many times. But at the same time, um, it was what it was. Okay. Uh, now, another individual I'm going to talk about. I've mentioned him in a lot of my spills. I got nothing but love and respect for him. Shout out to the homeboy Soldier Boy from Stockton 6th Street. One of the most vicious, vicious, it, the most vicious, bro. This Vato has more hands. The Vato was born with four hands, Vato. Straight up. Okay. He was born with two, these right here and two more. You know, he ain't fucking around, bro. When he hit you, you did the 360, the tornado, and you fell. That was it. It was plain and simple, period. And I've told the story about how he got into it with a vato named Tigre from, I don't even want to say his vato because I don't want to feel any, make anyone feel like they're disrespected. But he went in there, knocked the vato out, hit him one more time, and woke his ass up. He was not playing, right? But I will tell you this story. Uh, there was a little vato from Bakersfield, right? A little vato from Bakersfield, man, and this is a true story facts, Holmes. Um, vato gets in there. He's on the compa, it's all good, you know? And I could tell he's feeling some type of way, you know? And when most Sureños would get there, homes, they would call a Norteño out, homes. They wanted to see him. They wanted to prove that they were about their business and that was one way to do it if they didn't have no enemigas to get off with. And, uh, you know, it was cool. It was it was to be expected, man. We would do pretty much the same thing, you know? You had to kind of prove yourself. YA, CYA at that time was a proving ground. So, you know, you earned your stripes. You proved who you were, man. You showed everyone you were about to be your business. And you were down to handle your business with anyone at any point in time. So, the motherfucker comes there. Bing, da, bang. He's mobbing, right? He's doing his little thing. He was a little short, dark dude, kind of ugly. But mobbing. The mobilization was real. I could tell, right? And he was about it. And he comes up. And, and me, Soldier Boy, and the homeboy Shadow from Richmond, we're all kicking it together, man. Chilling. And he comes walking up. He's a smaller guy. So, I think, of course... The skin skins has to perform. It's going to be me because I was the smaller out of the three, you know. Um, and he looked straight at Soldier Boy. He looks at me and he was like, hey, bro. Soldier Boy's a big old dude at this time. Soldier Boy was like, yeah, what's up? He was like, hey, uh, I'm going to have to see you behind the hammer court. Soldier Boy says, ha, here, bro. Hold my headphones. Just put my shit on pause. That was my favorite part. I'll be right back. These guys go behind the hammer court. Now, this is a true story, what I'm going to tell you right now, because this is how it went down, okay? I'm going to tell it fast, because it went down fast, right? They go behind the handball court. That fool says, what's up, Pese? Soldier Boy hit him in the jaw. This Vata did two 360s and collapsed, okay? From that one hit over here, I don't know how it happened, but the Vata had two black eyes. True story, right? Them black eyes, he's, he probably still has a black eye. Them motherfuckers scarred him, homes. He had scars under his eyes for for a year. I was on that compa for a year with him. The black guy, he got the black guys in December. Sasuke, by the next October, two Halloweens later, he still had a fucking little corner of his eye was black. True shit, right? Um, that's how vicious Soldier Boy's hands were. Numerous times I seen this guy fight. School area, day room, gym, kitchen, bathroom, closet. While doing jumping jacks. It didn't matter, Holmes. Whoever this motherfucker hit, 
they destroyed, right? Simply put, he was like Ivan Drago, Wato. You know what I mean? Only not on steroids and, uh, you know, not as ugly. The homeboy fucking has hands. It's a known fact, man. Seen it with my own two eyes, man. I don't put two on the 10, man. I'm not putting Tapatio on it. I'm just stating facts. Soldier Boy from the 6th Street, man. Nothing but love and respect, man. He was a real one. Many times that Vato saved my skin. Many a times that Vato saved my back, man. Because there was plenty of times that Vatos were trying to get at me. Big old Vatos. 18, 20-year-old, 19-year-old Vatos. I'm 12, 13 years old. Talk about, hey, little, I see what's cracking. He was like, you tell me what's cracking. You know, he would handle the business for the literal homeboys. It wasn't that we wouldn't be down to handle our business. But Sasuke, come on, man. Let's speak facts here, man. When you're fucking 12 years old and you fucking only weigh fucking 95 pounds and a 400 pound fucking big old monster, 22 year old calls you out, there's going to be trouble, trouble. You know what I mean? It's going to be trouble. You know, everyone's going to go night, night. Um, Soldier Boy wasn't letting that happen. He was a 16 year old knucklehead, 16 year old knucklehead with hands of stone, bro. And he put everyone on their back. Not once. And I say this to be truthful and factual and not to disrespect anybody. The Sureños man stand up, nothing but respects. Not once did anyone ever fucking drop him, land even a couple punches, or put him in any type of form or fashion of hurt or pain or uh, or duress. This Vato handled it, period. Seen it over and over again, okay? Now, the third guy that I want to talk about here um, was a guy named Bozo. <laughs> a Sureño named Bozo, right? Bozo was from Eastside Trece. Orale, shout out to Eastside Trece, man. Mm, this motherfucker Bozo right here, bro. This bottle right here, right? I don't know what it was. I don't know what, what he drank that morning. But this bottle came out one day out into that yard and he started calling Sangres out. I don't know. I don't know if it's someone. I think from what I heard later on that one of his homeboys had just got killed on the guys by a Sangre, right? So he was feeling some type of way. But, bro, I watched him with my own two eyes dust off at least 11 Sangres in a row. Boop, boop, knockout. Boop, boop, tap out. Boop, boop, tap out. Bitty, bitty, bum, bum. He was getting his motherfucking issue on, homes. Again, a Selena concert. Shit was flying everywhere. You know what I mean? Tassos y You know what I mean? I'm active enough. He was getting his issue on, man. He was making it happen. Okay? And I was like, damn. And I looked at him and he walked away and he kind of looked at me and he was like, what's up, Bessie? And I was like, ain't nothing. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit, I'm good. <laughs> and in that fashion, I'm over here like neighborhood. I'm over here on some rock. I wasn't trying to fuck with that, bro. And I'm just being totally honest. The fool had hands. And even Soldier Boy was impressed. He was like, damn, man, my motherfucker was feeling some type of way. I think, man, like I said, his homeboy got clipped, bro. His homeboy got killed. Rest in peace to his homeboy, man. And he just fucking, the spirit was in him. But they had the Holy Spirit. He was handling his business. He made it happen, bro. I seen it with my own two eyes. Um, now I want to talk about probably probably the, what, the best fight that I ever seen in my life in prison, man. The best, bro. Um, besides that Spider Snoop one. That was a good one. Uh, was this guy named Lucky. You know, I don't know where he was from. I think he was from Sanjo. Um, and I think he was a Sureño out of Sanjo, man. But he got into it with the homeboy named uh, Peeps. Peeps was from Stockton. These motherfuckers right here, bro. They fought all the way from one point of the day room, down one side of the dorm in Carl Holton, all the way to the other side of the dorm, in the bathroom, went back up the ramp and ended up in room of t room 11. Getting it. Blackers didn't know what to do. They couldn't stop it. They were macing the shit out of these guys. These guys kept going. These guys got it in, bro. And at the end, they were both slammed, maced, looking at each other, bro. And I swear they both got up and they both looked at each other. And at the exact same time, the words that came out of their mouth was like, respect. I, bro, true story. Palabra. That happened. Okay. So, you know, I'm talking about uh, the best fighter. I'm talking about all this and all that. I'm going to talk about a fight I got into, and I'm going to tell you right now, I wasn't the best fighter. I don't claim to be. I'm not saying I'm the baddest motherfucking apple on the tree. You know what I mean? Uh, one damn apple don't spoil the whole damn bunch. But I will tell you this. Indubitably, I handled my motherfucking business. Still down to handle my business, right? And in a fucking menudo fashion, menudo style. Trip. So I remember I'm chilling, man. I'm posted up with the homeboy bad boy and the homeboy spanky the Yilas, rest in peace. We're posted up kicking it and we're playing uh, dominoes. We're sitting on our bunks. You know, the short wall was in, we're in Nellis and we're playing dominoes, getting ours on, getting it in. And uh, 
this Vato, he comes up. Oh, the, it was the homeboy Chuko from Sanger was there too. Chuko from Chancla, Barrio Chancla, which were at that time were Norteños. Now that Barrio has flipped and they have become Fresno Bulldogs or Sanger Bulldogs, whatever the case may be. Um, but it's neither here nor there. That's what it was at that time. So the little homeboy Chuko, he was a little homeboy too. He was real quiet, hella cool, bro. I like Chuko. Didn't say much, bro, but just very quiet and just a cool homie. So we're chilling, we're, we're chopping it up, all the homeboys, we're playing dominoes, just do, minding our own business. And this Vato comes walking up, man. He was from Laguna Parque Vikings. And um, they called him Silencio, right? I remember he was a shorter dude, kind of stocky. And he was like, he started saying something. And he did, he barely spoke too. He was one of those quiet Vatos. And he's saying something to Chuko. And then Chuko's like, all right. And what a lot of people didn't understand is Chuko had hands, bro. Chuko had hands, but it seemed like because he was the smallest one of us at that time, people were calling him out a little bit more. Maybe they, they thought they could victimize him or really handle their business with them. I don't know, whatever the case may be. Maybe he put hands on one of their homeboys and they felt some type of way. But for that, for some reason, it caught my eye that day. And I seen Chuko start to go to the latrine area, which was the bathroom, um, to go handle his business in the blinds. And I got mad. I got upset. So I was like, hey, hey. And the Vato looked back. And he's like, what's up? I said, why don't you fight me instead, bro? And he said, I don't give a fuck. Come on, let's roll. And I was like, in that fashion, right? So I got up and of course, bad boy goes with me. Another one of his homeboys goes with them. And uh, of course, they're going to keep posted while we handle our business. And I ain't going to lie to you. If I'm lying, I'm dying about those when I say this motherfucker beat me up, right? He beat me up from the feet up, straight up. He wasn't playing. Um, and this is how it played out. Have you guys ever been in a fight where you know you can manhandle this motherfucker? You're bigger than him. You're stronger than him. You're more tenacious and vicious with it. You got more fucking heart. You're serious about your shit. But this motherfucker, you just can't get him, right? You just, there's nothing you could do, man. He just has your number. This motherfucker put his head down and proceeded to throw these fists, homes that felt like they were fucking, uh, like Hulk Hogan was throwing them. You know what I mean? I am a real man. This Vato fucking hit me in my motherfucking jaw so many times, bro. I thought my jaw done fell off and it fell in the toilet. I couldn't get him and I started to get frustrated. I wasn't necessarily getting hurt. I was feeling him. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. I felt every one of those punches, but I was so frustrated because I just couldn't land the uppercut. I just couldn't get him. So eventually what I did, Holmes, I know it was kind of a sucker move, but I did. I ended up snatching him up, picking him up, throwing him in the toilet and started to stomp him out. Of course, the homeboys start fighting and uh, a lightweight little melee breaks off. They take me to the oil. They take the vato to the oil. And it was what it was. Man, I acted out of character. I'm not supposed to stomp anyone out. There was rules and regulations to going in the blinds. You're not supposed to do that. So I was mad. About the, you know, I was mad. I was upset. I was upset because he was beating me up, right? And that's just what happened. That's a true story. Um, it always stands out to me as one of the better fights I had. Um, and not one that I won. See, it's not always about winning. It's about the pull up and the show up and really doing it. Handling your business, right? And I felt some type of way. I thought I was going to go in there. Don't even trip, little homie. I got this shit. Watch out. Saws. No, I don't. No, Chuko. Right? That's how it ended up. But I don't discredit that man. I give that man respect. He did that. Whether he put his fucking head down and just let him fly, Holmes. Whatever his fucking tactic was, it worked. But it definitely worked, you know. They can't say swimmers aren't winners because that motherfucker, he was, hey, he was like that fucking Olympian in that motherfucker. He was making it happen, you know. I can't do the breaststroke, bitch, right? I was trying to catch up um, with a big old tomato in my back pocket. Anyway, so that was one of the better fights I've been in. And of course, in my life in prison, you don't see as many fights, one-on-ones. Every once in a while, you'll see the Africanos break out into a, uh, uh, some type of lightweight one-on-one, two-on-two. But for the most part, you're not going to see Rasa indulge in any type of uh, frivolous fights, one-on-ones. Man, if it's going to happen with the Rasa, it's going to fucking happen. They're going to get it cracking. There's going to be fucking people life lighted out. And uh, there's going to be a lot of metal involved. You know, that's just how it goes. So for the most part, you're not going to see a lot of Mexicanos, Chicanos, Rasa from either side, homes indulge in that frivolous behavior because it's just not becoming homes and it's not what happens. There's so much respect on them yards. Everyone knows that when it goes, when the yard goes down, it's fucking going to go down. You know, what you're going to see more is removals, uh, things of that nature, whether they're hands on or weaponry is involved. That's what's going to happen on prison yards in the state of California. I can't speak for other states because I haven't been to other states like that to tell you how it goes down. You know, now when I was out of state, of course, there was some one on ones. I indulged in a couple of one on ones. Right. Um, but they were neither here nor there. Nothing to speak on. Nothing to really elaborate on. Nothing fantastic. Um, just basic fights. You know, you win some and you lose some. Um, but I did see one. I did see one where these two white boys and uh, they were cool homeboys, I guess, you know, they were partners, they were chilling, they were on the basketball court and they were playing. I think I've told the story before. I'm going to reiterate it. Remix. Um, they were playing basketball and uh, they're playing one-on-one -on -one basketball and they were getting a little aggressive, you know, a little pushy with it, but they were homeboys. They were actually sellies. 
and uh, me and a homeboy bishop from Stockton, we're kicking back and uh, we're trying to fucking light a fucking uh, a frajo. And uh, we ain't got no fucking wick. We ain't got nada, right? We're struggling with an old lighter that's fucking been in prison with us for fucking the last three years. We're trying to light the motherfucker. And all of a sudden, we see him start to argue. So we're laughing. Hey, look, these white boys are going to get off right now. Trip out, right? And uh, one of them turns around and he calls the other one a bitch, right? Now, anyone that's ever been to prison, they'll tell you there's certain words you don't say. That's right up there with the best of them. So when he says this, the other one's feeling some type of way. And he said, what'd you say? I was like, oh, shit done got real. It just got real right now. And the vault was like, you heard me. And he's like, we can go in the corner and handle business, which was kind of the little blind spot area. Um, there was really no way to get away with it, but they were going to do what they did into the tower, seen them and shot somebody. Um, the other guy wasn't going out like that. He's like, what? And that fool said, you heard me. Boom. He hit him, bro. I seen his eyes roll back in his head. And that guy went, boom. He fell. When he fell on the ground, I heard a splat. I told my homeboy Bishop, let's go. That vault was gone, right? And in that fashion. Of course, authorities came, the CEOs, the fucking whoever, whatever the case may be, they locked everyone down. They took this guy out in a body bag and this one in handcuffs. And that was it. Jose La Vie, Sayonara, hasta la, way, way, hasta la Wego, hasta la bye bye. He was gone. We never seen him again. Last I heard, man, he ended up catching a life beef over that. Vato only had a couple months left to the gate. Um, so it's crazy. It's crazy in prison because things like that could happen, man. Oh, what a difference a day makes. Everything could be good. You could be chilling like a villain while you're dripping the toilet, man. Just mobbing. The mobilization could be all the way right, you know? And then, bang. Next thing you know, you're in the oil like, I didn't even mean to do that. So that's good. So that big old bone crusher sticking out of his ear. You didn't mean to? No, nah, it's because I was only aiming for his shoulder. But it was at the same time because he ducked. So he should have kept his head up like a soldado. Or he wouldn't be feeling like that. I was only trying to pierce his ear. You know what I mean? Mm -mm. Nah, you, you were trying to do something bad to him and you did that. That's what happens. Anyways, those are some of the best fighters that I've seen while incarcerated. And I say most of them were as a youth because that's where it was really going down, man. I'm sure there's some bigger, badder, most more vicious type motherfuckers, man. I know a lot of people got a lot of different stories and can speak on that. But at the same time, these are my experiences, uh, things that I've seen and true stories of real life facts, you know. I'm not trying to play and portray the role, role like I'm some high power motherfucker because I'm not. At the end of the day, I'm just like everyone else. I'm just like you watching this. And it's nothing but love and respect. And it's all about coming together and stop the fight. Fight the power of and in that fashion order the flavor flave you know anyways man hit that like button like and subscribe if you don't like it you know it is what it is i appreciate your view anyways gracias you know i hope that you move fast with a purpose i hope that you get everything that you want coming to you remember at the end of the day it's all about fucking being there for the raza getting there for your family making that shit happen doing what you got to do man we got the holiday season up man think about your kids think about your familia think about yourself homes take a little time homes be a real one bang bang the gun <laughs>